What's going on, everyone? Everyone having a good time? Okay, so I think I opened up the very first one of these back in 2020, so great to be back. I uh, want to thank all of you for the incredible support. And honestly, if this is a Sportsman's Coalition, have you guys seen the video of Tim Walsh trying to load a shotgun? <laughs> no, it's amazing. I look at Outdoor Life giving this clown a platform. But my four-year-old, at, at the age of four, understood how to load an auto loader a little bit better than that. I mean, so, you know, I, I've spent less time in a dunk line in Hyde County limiting out than it took for him to load a shell. It's not that hard. You pop it in. Drop the slide. Put two more in the bottom. For some of you I've seen you, you may pull the plug and maybe three or four more in the bottom. But, uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep that between us girls. But, uh, no, it, it's great to be back. It's great to be out here for the sportsmen. And, you know, it's sort of interesting watching what's going on with, you know, just exactly that kind of stuff, right? Uh, Kamala Harris, uh, Joe Biden put it on the MAGA hat. They realize the policies have failed, so they try to copy ours. But we have to understand all too well that they have no intention of actually going through that, but they'll tell you whatever it is that you need to hear to win. And then they'll do the opposite. It was like during the debate with my father where Kamala Harris, I'm not taking your guns. It was like, well, a week ago, a week ago you introduced a policy. It was a mandatory gun buyback program. So if you're not taking your guns, what is the problem with that sentence? There's a word. Man. Man, it, it seems like maybe you're taking our guns. Four days later, they were introduced an assault weapons ban. But that's what the media is going to do. They're going to run cover for them. They're going to protect them at all costs. They're not going to talk about the real issues. They're not going to talk about the failures. We've seen time and time again how they pretend that you know Kamala Harris's career started about what three or four days ago. <laughs> in the literally most democratic process imaginable. No, no votes. They will run roughshod over democracy in order to save democracy, folks. This is the Democrat party of today. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. I mean, they're literally, the projection from that party is so insane. They literally are doing all of the things they accuse us of doing, but when they do it, it's fine. Because they have the backing of big tech, they have the backing of a trillion dollars in mainstream media functioning as their marketing department. Uh, it's, a, it's absolutely asinine. I mean, you know, just watching the stuff, these are people who are going to take your guns, they're going to ban hunting, it's going to start somewhere. You know, Tim Waltz, of course, you know, this is how we also know the whole hunting thing is fake. They went out for three and a half hours, you know, doing a kick and kill type of hunt. Not that there's anything wrong with that, Chaz. It's, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Just understand what it is. And they didn't shoot a bird. Because they couldn't have, you know, the kill shot on there. I remember back in 2016, I went out and I was in Iowa. This was in the primary process. Uh, and, and Jake Tapper from CNN followed me on one of, like, a pheasant hunt in Iowa. And I think I shot, like, 30 birds. He's like, isn't that a little bit much? I go, I don't know. It feels pretty good to me. It's like, yeah, we're having a 30 for 30. He's like, pretty good at this. I'm like, yeah, not my first rodeo. But we've actually seen so much of that, right? The usual, the politician hanging out there with a gun, especially the Democrats, the fingers on the trigger, barrels pointed in someone's face. <laughs> That guy, yeah, he knows what he's doing, folks. But the problem is the Democrats and the media that are running with, they don't even know that it's obvious they don't know what they're doing. Like, they're like, this is the quintessential man. Right? Tim Waltz, remember the story like three weeks ago? MAGA is afraid of Tim Waltz's masculinity. I was like, I don't know, but <laughs> I have dated women much more masculine. seen a wrist so limp? <laughs> but that's the problem. That is, that's their idea of what a masculine man is. He's like the, no pun intended, like the FUD, the Elmer FUD, and we can also make the hunting reference there. In every sitcom that sort of, you know, crushed masculinity, the incompetent boob, you know, subservient to a, you know, brat wife that's, you know, controlling of everything. I mean, that's their idea of what it is to be a man and to be masculine. They, they don't even know the difference. It's, you know, it just goes across the board. It's the same thing with Kamala Harris's husband, who, you know, there's 
the you know the allegations. Of course, it's, you know, woman comes forward. I don't want to be. Here's what it is. There's two witnesses there. He slapped his girlfriend at a party because she was hitting on another guy. Probably because, let's just say, it probably wasn't <laughs> the new space of masculinity that you know the New York Times was pretending he is. And yet, it's buried. It's hidden because they'll do anything they can again to protect it. So. I think we all, in this room, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, we all understand exactly what they're trying to do, but we do have to make sure that our neighbors, our friends, uh, you know, that they get it, uh, that they get out and vote, uh, that they understand that literally everything we believe in as Americans uh, is at stake. Everything is on the table. Uh, you know, the people who've been yelling most about fascism and the threats to democracy seem to be behaving a lot like the actual fascists. They're trying to jail their political opponents, and not just my father, but many others. They actually did in many cases, oftentimes without due process. They're the party of censorship. Who was it, John Kerry last week? We really have to really stop this, this, first, this pesky First Amendment. Yeah. Yeah, this pesky, we really gotta stop this so we can prevent misinformation, but Hillary Clinton said the same thing, right? Who are gonna be the arbiters of truth? The people who told us that there's no way that the Wuhan lab leak came from the Wuhan lab that studies the exact virus at the ground zero. No, 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 no. it happened from three feet outside of the lab, magically. Yeah. There's no way it happened. And if you said that it did, like me, I got canceled. And if you were a doctor, you lost your medical grants or your research grants. Yeah. And of course it was the most plausible argument ever. But that doesn't matter. So the arbiters of truth are gonna be the largest peddlers of misinformation in the world. And I think we have an incredible opportunity right now. The Republican Party has truly become the party of unity. I mean, really, who would have thought that a Kennedy would be no, 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 no. And I'll take it. And again, we don't have to agree with everything. I've gotten to know Bobby over the last couple months. I was pretty instrumental in making that happen because I was really good friends with one of his son's best friends, and we were like, wait a second, you know, we were hanging out talking, I was like, we actually agree on like 95% of things, and maybe not on everything, but like, you know, wouldn't he be really great to go like, reform the CIA and figure out what the hell's going on, or, or the FDA, yeah. or any one of these agencies, and like, well, his guy gets it. You know, we, we got Bobby Kennedy and Tulsi Gabbard, and we traded for Dick Cheney. <laughs> embracing the Dick Cheney endorsement at the vice presidential debate. Like, it's this great thing. I'm like, you know, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm like, like, I could have sworn. I could have sworn that he was like the most evil warmonger in the history of the world, according to me and everyone in the Democrat Party. It's like the one thing we actually all agreed on until about a week ago. <laughs> and then it was wonderful. But that's the problem. In many cases, on many of the big issues, the parties have done a complete reversal. The Republican Party is now the party of free speech. The Republican Party is now the party of being anti-war, especially the endless ones that serve America absolutely no interest. <laughs> The Cheneys have profited off of big war and the endless wars for decades. I bet you Liz Cheney gets like Secretary of State, some sort of big DOD position. We'll be in wars for the rest of eternity. Because there's a couple of people in Washington that benefit from those wars. They make billions while your taxpayer dollars get spent. You, we don't have the money to take care of people in North Carolina. I got to actually experience something incredible today. Uh, one of the most amazing things uh, I'd ever seen. We, we toured. Um, you know, some of the areas, Pensacola County, or you know, township, I guess it really is, uh, you know, some of the hardest hit areas uh, from the storm uh, here. We did that with uh, Edward Graham from Samaritan's Purse. And in incredible organization. And, but, and, you know, you, you see it now, you, you see what they do around the world. You're like, great, but you don't actually know, you know, until you see it firsthand. I'm saying, we flew in on Black Hawk helicopters delivering generators and heaters and food and water. And you're saying, 
wow, like stuff's actually really happening here. But then you talk to the locals, and I'm like, so where's FEMA? Like, what are they doing? We don't know. I mean, they're like the local sheriff, the head of the local fire department is giving us, we haven't, we haven't seen them yet, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they're here. But they're not, because they spent a billion dollars of their budget housing migrants in luxury hotels, illegal immigrants, around the rest of the country. So when America is in an emergency, there's nothing left. And remember, that's your taxpayer dollars, right? So the FE in FEMA, federal emergency, wow, I can't do that. We have to, we have to push the woke cause because the Democrats now understand that their policies have not only ostracized blue collar, hardworking voters that would have otherwise been traditionally Democrat, but now they've ostracized African Americans, they've ostracized the Hispanics, they've ostracized everyone. So rather than you know doing the shockingly novel concept of like, I don't know, maybe taking care of the actual voters, I know it's hard to believe. Yeah. I know, so we, you know, this is unusual. Maybe just do that. We can't do that, that would be against everything we believe in. They just said, hey, we'll just import 20 million people, we'll stick them in places that are swing states, we'll stick them in red counties, we'll destroy those counties and let Americans spend for themselves. But it's amazing, it, it, it's been so flagrant, it's been so obvious, that as I go around the country now, I, I get people, and not just you know, in a place like this, where, you know, let's call it kind of home team, but in places where no one's expecting me to be. And the amount of people that come up to me, every demographic imaginable, many times in 2016, I'd be like, if that person's coming up to me, I'm probably gonna get punched in the face, or maybe a pie. And they're literally out loud, just thank you for what you guys are doing, you have to win. You know, it's not just the guy in a red MAGA hat, it's everyone. Uh, it's so palpable, and I, you know, unfortunately, it's not my first rodeo, it's not my third rodeo. Okay. I've been, been a, a dancing monkey for a long time. Wind that thing up, throw me some peanuts, maybe an energy drink, and it's like, okay, give me a life. I'm gonna do this for the 90th time today. Is it November 5th yet? I promise you, win, lose, or fraud, I am really looking forward to November 5th. It's going go on. possibly have is the fraud because it's almost like they've given up on everything else, right? Think of how bad a candidate you have to be as a Democrat to go on the view and like basically commit like political suicide. Like, yeah, I mean, like I've done the view. Go back and Google it. It's, you know, and I was reasonably well behaved because I couldn't, you know, it's five on one, right? But like I couldn't come out hot out of the gate because if I did, then I'm a terrible person, I'm a misogynist. I'm like, I don't know, they're on TV every day. I was invited to talk about my book. They didn't ask me a single question about my book. They just attacked me, but so I was like, you know what? This could probably go pretty bad. So about five minutes before we go live, it was their 5,000th show. Five minutes before we go live, I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just Google the dumbest things ever said or done on The View? The list is long and not very distinguished. So I just had a mental image of a couple of these things. It got so bad that when I started going on the offense, once they sort of made it, and I, went, I brought up these facts. And the audience of like 150 New York City people who probably hate my guts started to turn because they've never actually heard the facts. Like, you know, Whoopi Goldberg's, you know, supporting Roman Polanski, literally a child rapist. Like, why would you do that? She, it got so bad, by the way, I wish you could see, because the view itself was pretty good, but if you got the tape of what happened in the middle, like during the commercial breaks, I had Whoopi Goldberg MFing the audience. <laughs> Shut the F up, this isn't a viral rally, you can't, I'm like, you know, listen, man. <laughs> the problem is they're just so used to people going on there, they need, you know, someone needs to go push something, like, I don't need, a, I don't care, I don't need anything from you, I never need to get invited back, I could care less, I'll burn the place down. <laughs> and so I did. Megan McCain, even as the, you know, let's call it the lone conservative. <laughs> conservative like Mitt Romney. Uh, you know, and, and the rest of them. Like, and have a better performance than Kamala Harris. I mean, think about it. Would you do any differently, anything differently than Joe Biden? No, no, not that I can think of. I'm like, really? 
Like, yeah, it seems like, you know, that would be a place where, you know, hey, you know, we, we could have maybe done something different with the Afghan withdrawal that killed 13 incredible Americans. Maybe we could have acknowledged their existence. I've met with a bunch of those whole star families since then. Maybe, maybe we didn't have to have the Secretary of State get up before Congress and the world and say, rather than acknowledging the disaster, say, and I quote, he said this, I, I literally thought I was being punk. I was like looking around for like TV cameras to fall out of the ceiling, like I'm on the star of the Truman Show, right? Like they have to be messing with me. Like please sir, blink three times if I'm just the star of a TV show and they're just trolling me until I commit suicide because it feels like it. The Secretary of State, you know, the adults that are back in charge, we were told that, that was, and I quote, Anthony Blinken, I am shocked and dismayed that the Taliban did not install a more diverse and inclusive government in Afghanistan. I'm like, I was as dumbfounded as Joe Biden is on a stage, which is like, when, when, you know, I, got, I got lost for a moment. I'm like, if you want to be dismayed, fine, I understand. Dismayed, baby. You're shocked? You're shocked at the time, like, I don't know. Like, these are people that threw homosexuals off of buildings for the last 20 years, that we have been at war with them. You're shocked that they didn't have, like, a trans coalition representative? Like, hey, Leah Thomas from the Penn Swim team, tell us what we should do. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you wouldn't have done anything differently? The, the disastrous policies that made us import oil from Iran, the world's leading state sponsor of terror? How about you wouldn't have uh, maybe not given them six billion dollars? Because they said, we, uh, we promise we won't spend it on terrorism. <laughs> These are not serious people. You wouldn't have nothing different. But we know she's actually not lying because she cut and paste Joe Biden's policies and put him on her page a month after she became the nominee, because God forbid anyone asked her what her actual policies are. And we know it wasn't just like the plagiarism scandal that just came out today about her book where she cut and paste from Wikipedia entire sections of her book. We know it's the real thing because she didn't even change the source code, so people were able to realize that the candidate for change, Kamala Harris, just copied the policies that have put us into this disastrous state. We went from a time of prosperity to a time of poverty. We went from a time of peace to a time of war. You're not gonna change anything? Again, the media is gonna do a lot of that. She's the candidate of change. I'm like, okay, fine. Candidate of change. You're the vice president to the most absentee president in the history of America. He's been on vacation for what, 41% of his presidency? And he has dementia. Seems like that would be a powerful vice president. Maybe the most powerful vice president ever. If you're gonna do all these changes, like, why not start three years ago? Why not start almost four years ago? Why not start today? Show us that you're going to do something different, but she can't because she won't. The incompetence is insane. I mean, you saw you know, again, you don't have to go further than watching Tim Walsh load a shotgun to realize that, you know, this guy's not exactly there, but they'll pretend. You saw the debate with J.D. Vance. It was actually incredible. Like, you know, I sort of understand some of these things a little bit. I've gotten decent at it. I'm like, I'm watching Tim Walsh. J.D.'s talking. He's like, yeah, no, yeah, right? I'm like, I think he's voting for us. Like, you, you know what I'm talking about? It was, it was the worst optics in the history of politics. Like, he's not in love. Yeah, he's right about that. <laughs> what do you have to say? Like, I, I don't and then JD's dismantling a piece by piece, talking about his legislation, you know, his, his famed legislation of the thing he's most proud of, putting tampons in boys' bathrooms. That's what we need, guys. That's gonna keep Russia at bay. Putin is really intimidated because menstruating men in boys' high schools are gonna be, I mean, that's his legislative accomplishment. And like, they couldn't choose someone else who was perhaps a more competent candidate because A, that person, pretty much any person, would outshine Kamala Harris, and B, some of the options would really upset the Hamas caucus, because we're now catering to terrorists. No lie, no lie, we've seen it. And it's happened at you know, my college campus, and college campuses all over the place. People used to ask me, you know, where are you going? I went to Penn, I was an Ivy League guy, I went to Wharton, that's a great place. Where did you go to school? I didn't. 
<laughs> no, I don't want to, I'm sure they don't want to be associated with me, that's fine, but like, when the university president of Penn, Harvard, MIT, go before Congress and they can't say that, hey, literally chanting for the murder and rape of people, innocent women and children, would be a violation of school policy? They can't, they can't say that that would be, you know, that's not a free speech issue, right? There's a code of conduct. I promise you, when I graduated in 2000, if I went after someone in the trans world, and this was before that became like, you know, the mafia, where like, you know, it's the most powerful sect of people in the world that is like 0.02% of the population, I still haven't figured out how that happened, and yet it has. If I'd have said something, I'd have been thrown out on my ass in about two seconds. They can't, they can't quite get there. Because they understand that those are their voters. So, you know, it, it, it never ends. Um, so, we just gotta win. We gotta get through them. And then on November 6th, I gotta go hunting because I'm sick of this crap. I've had enough campaigning. I'm done. Wanna go up to my farm in Hyde County for bear season. Uh, we'll have a good time. Chess pointed out last year. It's like, you know, you actually spent, as a, as a political refugee formerly of the People's Republic of New York to the free state of Florida, uh, I actually spent more days last year in North Carolina than I did in New York. A little bit crazy, but, but it's good. But, you know, with all the people that are moving down here from New York, with all the people who moved to Florida, and then the halfbacks, as Chiz likes to call them, they're like, it's a little too warm here, so we're gonna go halfway back and they end up here. It, it's not a simple state. It should be, but it isn't. You know, we can't just win the presidency, okay guys? Just understand that. It's not just about my father at the top of the ticket. We have to win every single seat down the aisle. that I am not the upstanding citizen that Hunter Biden is. <laughs> but, as someone who has done 50 hours of congressional testimony for treason and crime punishable by death, um, yeah, I don't want to do that again because we don't control the House or the Senate. But it's not even about that. We have to win school boards. Yes. Yes. We have to win state selections. I, I want to stop the indoctrination of our children so it doesn't take their inability to actually own a home or do basic math out of college, maybe read some of these basic life skills because they've been indoctrinated and they intimately know the 4,376 genders, but nothing else. We have to win the dog catcher race because they'll figure out a way to weaponize that if we don't. They will go after your hunting dogs and they will send them to the middle of Ohio. <laughs> I'm not gonna spread conspiracy theories, but I saw some of those things on those barbecues, and that was a mistake, folks. <laughs> I've never seen a steak with four legs, like 18 inches apart, sticking up. Like, unless it was like the world's smallest cow. <laughs> so, you know, as a, as a final note, guys, just you know, get involved. Uh, we need to do it, you know, for me. Uh, for my family, you know, I can assure you, it was much easier being a real estate developer from New York City, but once we're in a fight, we're gonna stay in that fight. But one guy can't do it alone. Right. Donald Trump can't do it by himself. Uh, he needs your guys' help. They've shown that they can cancel the most powerful man in the world, even as president. They censor him, they block him, they undermine him and subvert his will. Unelected bureaucrats say, you know what, we know better. We've seen that happen. But if the majority of Americans get behind him and become unafraid and fight the same way, we can win. And we can win with a mandate where that stops. There's a reason they're going after him so much harder. There's a reason even, even the Republicans in many cases are so scared, and it's because he's a threat to the hegemony that they've created, the power that they have amassed. It's really the uni party in Washington, D.C. Yeah, right. So we need to get out there. We need to get Dan elected AG here. We just need to like, I don't know, follow the Constitution and some of these, you know, little trite things that, you know, the Democrats, when they talk about democracy, it's like a laughing talking point at a cocktail party. Like, oh, democracy, we say that, and everyone else takes it seriously. It's a joke to them. 
We've seen that because they run roughshod all over it again. So we have to do it together. And I can assure you that if we do that, if we become unafraid, we can be unstoppable and we can actually fix this country. If we do not, it's over. And I get it. You're used to this. You know, you guys are junkies like me at this point. You know, you go to every political rally and say, I've seen that. I am. If it wasn't for this dog catcher race, this is literally the most important election ever. You know, we, we've seen that every time. Like, but when you actually look at the actions of the other side, how far they're willing to bastardize our freedoms, our rights, our beliefs, everything, how they're willing to openly mock them, whether it was all the things that come out of Kamala Harris's mouth and the word salad stuff that she says, or Gretchen Whitmer. You saw that one, right? Here, yeah, we're going to give you a Dorito, uh, you know, while breaking bread. It's a... Uh, the blasphemy. Uh, they're openly mocking us at this point, and they understand that if they win, they will continue that. So we have no choice but to fight, because we have to fight for our children, their children after them, and we have to leave them a country that they know and recognize. So I want to thank everyone uh, who's here, everyone in Johnston County, for just putting on these events, for staying involved in the game. But next 22, 23 days, whatever it is, uh, just work. Get out there, knock on every door, make every call. Do whatever it is that you can do to help get guys like Dan over the line, like my father, like your representatives. We just have to sweep these clowns and get them out. You know, I watched it today, it was interesting. Even Bill Clinton, you see that one? Even Bill Clinton was like, well yeah, no, Lincoln Riley's border could have been prevented if it wasn't for our open border with Kamala Harris as the borders are like that. No, they, even they know. They're throwing her under the bus. Joe Biden, in like the rare moments of lucidity, was like, wait a minute, what just happened to me? Like the, the party that I've been loyal to forever threw me under the bus, they implanted this, it was a coup. Even he's now seemingly subverting her because everyone understands what it is. If that's the head of the Democrat party for four years, that's over. They, they gotta start over and from scratch. And so they want a mandate too, I believe. But again, there's a lot of money. A lot of special interests, well, you know better than anyone. I mean, some of these congressional races were out spending us five, 10 to one, because they got billionaires out the wazoo that'll fund that stuff because they're hiding behind gates and fences with armed security. It's never really gonna affect them. But you know, our cities have become war zones. It doesn't have to be this way, guys, but it will if we don't all take action. So I, I hope you guys can put in that effort for you know three weeks, uh, you know, get everyone over the line and with that, we can really fix our country. So thank you so much, everyone, for having me. We really appreciate it. Thank you.